Okay, so guys, I don't know why I'm online, but I know why. So I'm just trying this out. I don't know if my um, connection is good. I'm going to try and stand or sit still. Um, I'm going to try and stand still or sit still. But hey, as I always do, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I just pray that my video is live because I tried it once before and it wasn't showing me as live so oh hi okay this is good this is good so i am live amen 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 all right so this is the day that the lord has made let us all rejoice and be glad in it i'm in auckland new zealand yeah i'm starting to say where i am because i'm gonna be traveling again soon so god is good good to see you brother ronald and um yeah god bless you man you're amazing you're amazing so guys I don't know, but I'm just here in New Lynn, walking around. I just did my workout. I've got another race coming up this Sunday. I know. How do we do it? Who does that? Who does that? Yeah, so it's one question that I ask myself, like, how do I do all these things? I can't do anything without Christ. And I believe the same applies to each and every one of you. Yes, God is amazing in us. Amen. So there's so many things that we, we can ask ourselves to say, how do you do this? How do I do this? How am I going to do this? But I've got one answer for everyone. I don't know if anyone out there is a non-believer. It's all because of Christ. No matter what we are going through, guess what? There is one answer that I can give to you right now to say Jesus is the answer. Jesus Christ is the answer. I just had an interesting conversation with somebody right around the park. I didn't know why I came to run in this park today. I haven't been here for quite a bit because um, I've been very, very, very excitingly busy but i came here and i met this old man he was walking on his walking stick and he starts to tell me about oh i'm 70 i'm going for a valve replacement and da, 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 da. then i say to him hey dude can i just bless you so here's what happens in life there is always a reason for every person that you meet. So we just started sharing. I just started sharing Christ with this guy. And then a woman comes and she says, you're so beautiful. I saw you running up and down the stairs. I said, hey, I couldn't do it without Jesus. I didn't even care whether she believed or not. But what came out of that is she believed. She believed. But she also believed in something called universal whatever i don't know you guys who believe in the law of attraction and stuff so just talking to her made me feel like i need to do a live video here right now to say hey guys i don't know how consumed are you in the things of christ are you a lukewarm christian that says when something happens you decide to say mm, i would try this i would try the zodiac signs i would try the law of attraction i'll try to replace it with something else i'll go to some readings of some palm reading and all the crap that happens around the world here's the thing here's the thing you either believe or you don't believe you either believe or you don't believe we're coming to those times where you have to choose christ or nothing i've been meeting with a lot of people who are just so anti-christ and it's not their fault but we the people who call ourselves believers it is up to us to share the truth because only the truth will set people free i'm not saying shove christ into people's throats but it is through your actions it is through the words that come out of our mouth that people will believe they are known by their fruits so if you go to matthew 7 16 you shall know them by their fruits and i'm one of those people that i believe that if i'm not doing it if i'm not living it if i'm not living like christ if i'm not loving like christ accepting others like christ did he sat with tax collectors he ate with them and even with prostitutes come on guys but with us they will know us by our fruits so much that like when you sit with sinners they can tell the difference that you are definitely different there's something about you that i want believe me this lady she just wanted to hear more she had questions she wanted to hear more and more and more and more and i kept saying on this on the side i'm like holy spirit you gotta speak through me right now because i don't know all the answers i can't speak everything from genesis to revelation except through you so just pick up scripture tell me something for her and at the end of the day she's like can i please have your number i need to catch up with you some more be that person
be the Christ everywhere you are. And there's so much going on in the world at the moment. Oh my God, yes, this is Newlyn, it's beautiful. So much going on in the world. And one of the things that I just wanted to say is there's somebody out there right now, I know you are broken. You believe, you know Christ is there, you know Christ died for you, you know he rose again on the third day. But what it means to be a Christian is we need to get out there and be true representatives of, of Christ no matter what it takes. I know I've been offline for quite a bit, like not doing videos and stuff like that. But you know what, guys? And I know I'm becoming more and more calm. Don't ask me what happened. It's just Jesus happened. You see, there comes a season where he just sort of like t turns you down a bit. There's going to be a time of shouting and screaming and, you know, getting all crazy. But now it's that season where it's like not everyone wants the hyper, you know. So Christ is there for us. And he wants us to ooze him, him in everything that we do through the words that come out of our mouth. So just one thing, I've been posting a few things in the last few weeks where I say, do a self-assessment. You see, one of the things that make us be afraid to speak Christ, to share Christ is fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear maybe because of something that happened in our past. Fear maybe because of something that is going on right now today. Fear maybe of the future to say what's going to happen if I share this or if I share Christ with people. Fear of losing friends and family. But here's the thing. Here's the deal. I would rather lose a friend and talking them into heaven than winning friends by lying to them and talking them into hell. So what's, what's it going to be for you? So if you are a fellow believer, you're a fellow Christian, and I always say in most of my videos, Christianity is not a religion. Yes, it can. you take religion, Christianity, when you're filling in forms, but when you leave it, it's got to be a lifestyle where you say, I believe in Jesus. I love like Christ. I want to live like him. He dwells in me. He resides in me. I'm a resident of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is in me, and I want to ooze and reflect Christ in everything that I do. So much that everything that you do reflects Christ. So anyone struggling with stuff from the past believe me i've been one of uh, one of those people and the only way to get over some of those things is by admitting and acknowledging that you recognize those things let go of those things let go of any past hurts of anything that didn't go well in the past you need to let go of it because we shall know you by your fruits they shall be known by their fruits no matter how hard you try to hide things they will start showing and reflecting when you when you least expect them to so you really need to just be honest with yourself and say you know what i can't keep living my life like this i can't keep going like this i can't keep doing this i can't you know david tried to hide from what he had done and you know, you've got to keep covering up and covering up and covering up and it's going to be layers of sin, layers of strongholds until they get out of control. <laughs> if you've heard of scandals happening in the church today, because so many of us, we try to hide things from our past. We don't want people to know, but listen to me. It's time to just be open. If you're struggling with something, you've got some strongholds that you've been covering up in the closet and you think you can stand in front of a pulpit and get away with it God is so transparent he exposes and when he exposes he exposes even us who say we follow him you can only hide certain, certain things up to a certain extent but there comes a time where he says you know what only the truth shall, shall, shall set you free my child only the truth sets us free and I would rather get counsel from the Holy Spirit. I would rather get told off by the Holy Spirit than waiting to be told off by people when you're standing in front of a pulpit. So what is going to be? Would you rather do a self-assessment on your own? Maybe just from listening to Casey's video right now. Just sit down and start reflecting on your life to see. Have you really been doing what you are called to do? Or have you been manipulating things in some ways? Have you been doing things just to try and please people? Have you been changing? changing the word of God into suiting your own, um, you know, intentions. 
if you have it's time to repent it's not too late you're still alive you've got you've been given another chance to repent to worship and to confess your sins and god is so amazing he's faithful he's so quick to forgive and he forgets amazing grace oh my god so i don't know why i'm here right now but i believe there's somebody who really needed to hear this we are not perfect and i'm one of those people that i always say to people i'm not perfect but it is through believing in christ that he corrects us. He helps us by allowing us to go through his disciplining fires. That if you are teachable, the Holy Spirit will show you how. He will teach you how. Be teachable. And I say this every day to myself. I say, I want to be teachable. So Holy Spirit, teach me. Marinate me in the blood of Jesus. And anything that is not of you, out and don't come back. You've got to tell those spirits that you know you are operating and that are not of Christ to get out and not come back. Because if you just say get out, they will go and come back again. Get out and never return. And learn to bless people. So, so much is going on in the world and it's even in the Christ, Christian kind of like life, you know, where churches, they've become something else. And I have been crying out to God saying, Lord, may the church, which is you and me, may we be who, oh my God, it's beautiful and sunny here. You called us to be, may we operate in our giftings and just be whom you want us to be and the only way we can do that is through inviting the holy spirit to operate in us and to work in us and through us 24 7 no compromise the problem is that there are so many of us who when we are met with situations where we feel like we can't do this anymore we just feel like nah let's try it the world's way let us pray for strength to say lord help us when we are faced with temptations, remind us of your word because the word of God is the sword of the spirit. We can't fight on our own. We need the word of God. We overcame Satan by the blood of Jesus and by the words of our testimonies. You've got to speak the word. You've got to testify in order to overcome. So many strongholds going on like in people's lives, but are you acknowledging that those are there? Because they won't leave you. They won't leave your family. They won't leave your life. They won't leave your church unless you acknowledge that they are there. You need to acknowledge that something is wrong for it to be right. And then if you can't do it on your own, call somebody to pray with you. But nothing that the Holy Spirit, nothing that prayer can, cannot fix. You'll be amazed at how one prayer can just change your life turn your life around get on your knees confess it to god and i'm saying this from experience because i've just had a one week of like some amazing things happening in the last one week well the, let's just say the beginning of this year 2018 has been amazing super amazing i just feel so humbled with what the lord is doing in my life right now and i believe he's doing the same in so many people but don't let fear be the fact the, the, the factor that prevents you from accessing your blessings and don't let your mouth be the source of the blockage of your blessings as well so many times we speak things that we regret but if we ask the holy spirit to guide us to speak through us always always we will speak at the right time the right ways that are there to build and not to harm and I just bless each and every person watching. I don't know if you're going to watch this later on. But there's one. Oh, actually, I, I just feel like just showing you the uh, park where I'm at at the moment. It's amazing how God's creation is. I'm just going to walk around here as I talk. Um, but God is amazing. God is amazing. So this is, pa uh, no, not past park, sorry. This is, uh, oh, come on. This is in New Lynn. It's the Olympic Park in New Lynn. It's amazing. So I come here to do stairs. If you haven't done anything today, as I always do, get up and do something. Sitting and worrying or being anxious about stuff is not going to help you in any way. You either immerse yourself in the word of God and after doing that, you need to get up and do something. You've got to be active. Fellow preachers out there, I do know that so many of us were so hooked into the like, I need to read the, the Bible, I need to pray for people, I need to um, intercede for people. But 
you don't want to be that kind of preacher that's going to be, um, okay, I'm sorry, I was going to say really the wrong word. You're going to be breathless in front of people because you are so overweight and um, you're trying to encourage people to do the right things by God. But then you yourself, you know, you're struggling with anxiety and depression behind closed doors. So I'm one of those people that I usually just say things as they are and say, fellow preachers, fellow Christians, yes, we can share Christ with people. But there is more to life and even Christ, he wants you to look after his temple. I always say to people, your body is the temple of Christ. And I've done my fair share of training this morning, but I'm going to run another 10 k's to my house right now. Get up and do something. Get up and do something. We shall know them by their fruits. If you're going to come to me and you are complaining about how not so happy you are with the way you look and you're trying to preach Jesus, I'm going to be like, I don't want that kind of Jesus, if you know what I mean. So get up and do something. I don't know why I, I, I began to mention this. I believe there's somebody who needed to hear that too. But here's the thing. In life, I believe we all go through some emotional strongholds. I'm just going to be talking. I don't know what I'm blabbing about. Just listen if you're online. But, you know... So many people, and I just believe like there are some categories for these strongholds where, oh my God, this is beautiful, where we don't really know whether it's from our past or it's from our current or it's from the future worries of the past. Strongholds from the past or strongholds from what we're experiencing today or is it strongholds from what we are worried about that it might happen tomorrow. So I usually, I was just talking to someone saying, break the strongholds into three categories and you know where your strongholds are coming from. What is stopping you from moving? What is stopping you from doing what God wants you to do? The first one I wanted to mention is that strongholds from the past. Is there anything that you experienced in your past that you haven't dealt with properly? And you... <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You haven't dealt with it properly. You've been passive about it, thinking that going to church is going to heal you. Just being walking through the church doors. Or maybe you are like KC, you love running, and you think running it off is going to deal with all the crap that you experienced in the past. Or you think working hard, doing tw uh, shifts, one shift after another. I don't know if you are a working shift work or if you are working somewhere, you think overworking yourself and making more money is going to heal you. Or maybe you think getting into a marriage that you really didn't, were not prepared for, it will heal you. Just finding someone, uh, some partner or some whatever, I don't know what you guys call them here in the Western world, is going to heal you without even, you know, dealing with your stuff properly. So here is... The thing, if you've got some emotional strongholds and you know these things that make you feel insecure from your past, deal with them now and if possible, deal with them right now as I'm online and just be honest with yourself, acknowledge that those things are there and deal with those things and just say, Lord, I know I've been running. Oh, hi, Minyara Zindepiako, how are you? I've been running, running away from the fact that I know there is stuff from my past that I didn't deal with. And I've been passive. Or some people would call it pretending like they are okay, but they are not. And this could include like things like things that happened yesterday or last month. Or some of your choices that you've made as an adult or as a young adult. I don't know what those are. And sometimes because of those experiences, you've sort of like adopted some of those things as your normal way of living, of thinking. You just think it's part of life, it's part of life because I've experienced it since I was young. So that's how it should be, that's how it is. Is there anything like that in your life? It's not too late. And I believe I'm online for, that, for, for, for a reason. I don't know, there's somebody, you might watch this video later. But the Lord wants you to deal with those things. It's the emotional strongholds that hold us back. It can be a small little thing that just grows into preventing you from accessing your calling or your blessing. Let go. 
like I said, I'm going to mention three categories. I've mentioned strongholds because of past experiences. The second one is because of what you're experiencing right now. Whatever you're experiencing today is not what you are meant to be. So many people get stuck in what is happening right now and they become hopeless. We become stressed and fatigued because of things that we are experiencing right now and we feel like there is no need to do anything. Oh my God, this park is so beautiful. Just have a look at this. This is Olympic Park in Yulin. You might not be feeling well. You've been praying and asking the Lord to heal you and it's taking a while so you feel like there's no point hoping in Him. All I can say is let go and just let God be God. One of the worst ones, which is what every one of us, believe me, like even myself, I struggle with this one sometimes, is worrying about the future. I worry so much about what's going to happen tomorrow. So many of us, we do. We worry so much about what's going to happen tomorrow. What if I lose my job? What if my company doesn't become successful? What if the ministry doesn't get enough money from the um, offering that people are giving in the church? What if, what if, what if, what if? And to be quite honest with you all, most of the things that we what ifs, what ifs, they are not real. We make them up in our minds. We imagine them and they sound true. The devil is so clever because he comes through our minds and then he gives us the what if. Even though you've been bold, you've been brave, you've been fearless, you just get the what if word and then you stop. It stops you from everything. So I don't know why I got prompted to share this with people online today. I'm just going to try and cut this video really short right now and say, let go. Let go. Sit down and do a self-assessment and just see like, is there anything that you haven't dealt with in your life properly? once and for all let's just do it and say lord take over we worry about the future so much that we become paralyzed to live today so many of us we end up feeling like there's no need to live because we are so worried about what might happen what if this happens and i'm just here to encourage people to say when you feel hopeless immerse yourself in the word if you're not at work right now and you feel like you don't have much to do with your life right now, get up. Go for a walk. I'm not saying not everyone is designed to be a runner. Go for a walk. <laughs> Just do something. Do something. And remember, there's so many things. We live in an imperfect world. But just remember, Christ he became imperfect and got crucified for you and me so that we could be perfect by believing in him. But that perfection, which is righteousness, we get it through the faith that we have in him. But that faith, sometimes we lose it and we forget about it when things become tight. I'm going to ask you now, what triggers most of your strongholds? Is it your past? Is it some stuff that you experienced in your past? It could be abuse. It could be some bullying. It could be some crap going on in your family. Maybe broken families. It could be stuff that you've never told anyone and is troubling you because you wish you had. Is it some trials you're facing today right now? As KC is speaking online, you start to think of all the things that, you, that are happening in your life and you're thinking, wow, what am I going to do with this? Is it fears of the future, which all of us, we get to experience, but how severe are your fears? 
How serious do you take your fears? Do you allow the devil to just come and tell you what if, what if, and then you give up everything? Is it everything that Casey has mentioned right now? So, what I'm going to encourage you to do is just sit down and check to see where the source of your strongholds comes from. Is it from the past? Is it from the present trials? Or is it from your fears of the future? If it's all of the above, then you got some work to do. Believe me, we all need to do the same thing. Immerse yourself in the word. What does God say about you? Replace those strongholds from your past, from your present, and from your fears about the future with the truth of God, with the word of God, and be set free. Where there is the spirit of the Lord, there is liberty. I always say this scripture all the time. Where there is the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. If you replace whatever you're thinking with the word of God, with the truth that comes from his word, you will realize that we overcome our strongholds. Refuse to be bound by Satan's lies. He's so deceiving. So right now, Father, right now I just pray mighty God for each and every person who is watching this. I just pray, Lord, that if they've got some stuff that they are dealing with from their past, heal them, Lord. Heal them, Jesus. Heal us, Almighty God. So, dear Father, I'm just going to bless you all right now before I head off. Not the usual KC videos, obviously. So, dear Heavenly Father, it's so awesome that the Lord now has allowed us to have this relationship with the Father. We've been bound by emotions for too long. For those who've been bound by emotions, just be honest to the Father right now and say, I know I have been bound by emotions for so long. I'm just going to sit down here. So, Father, we know that we've been bound by emotions from our past, from our prison and fears of the future. And we've allowed them to detect our lives. We've wasted so much time and worry regretting and fearing and shaming feeling shame ashamed of our lives because of strongholds from the past and worries or being anxious about the future so lord we ask you now to lead us in the path that brings wisdom and understanding if anything i hope people do get this last prayer so, Father, free us right now from the chains of our past that are raped around our minds. Show us the goodness that comes from trusting in what you say, in what your word says. You have already won the victory. Christ overcame everything that we are going through right now. So remind us every day that we are feeling low, we are feeling hopeless. When we are facing trials and tests, remind us that the victory has already been won. You have already won the victory, Jesus. Now grant us the grace, Lord, to live it out in everything that we do. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. So, Father, I just bless every person online right now, anyone who is going to watch this video later. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. All right, guys. I'm going to head off now. I'll try to shoot another video later. Blessings. I love you all so much. So, so very much. Goodbye, guys.